Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be starting a new series of character builds because you'll seem to love the Iron Man one, which you can check out up there. As I mentioned in that previous I'm back video, I'm back by the way, hey, it's me, Sebastian from Sebastian's Cold Run. I mentioned that I was going to start a series of character builds based on some characters from the Shadow and Bone TV series, which is now streaming on Netflix. This series is based on a series of books known as the Grishaverse by Lee Bardugo. You can actually see them on the shelf uh, here. The Shadow and Bone trilogy, the Six of Crows duology, and then I think it's the King of Scars duology, which comes after that. I haven't actually read it yet, so I'm not 100% certain. However, this TV show, like I said, it's based on these books. It's fantastic. It's a wonderful mishmash of sort of Tsarist Russia, like World War I, 20th century sort of stuff, along with some really interesting and unique magic systems, fantastic setting, the cast, the everything about it is fantastic. You have to check it out. This series is also a wonderful example of how well magic and firearms can blend together. As we know, I've done a series on videos about putting firearms into your fantasy stuff, which you can also check up there. But this character build series, we are going to be building the characters from Six of Crows. There are six of them, hence the name. And in the first season, we meet five of them, although two don't seem to be connected to things just yet. In these videos, I am going to be building each Six of Crows character, starting with Kaz Brecker, and then Jesper, Inej, Matthias, Nina, and of course, Wylan. TV show watchers might be confused as to who Wyland is because he hasn't appeared yet, but he's coming in season two. So that's going to be one just for the book nerds. So as I said, we are going to be beginning with Kaz Brecker and moving along with the rest in more videos to come. I am going to be focusing mainly on the show depictions of these characters, as I understand it is much easier to watch a TV show than it is to sit down and read a book. So I am going to be focusing on the characters as they appear in the show. If there are any deviations or like changes that appear or future things that happen in the books, I will mention those. I will give very clear warning and timestamps and everything so that you can avoid those spoilers. Speaking of timestamps, I'm going to put some up over there so that you can click and skip to things. I'll also have stuff down in the doobly-doo below so that you can check out in there. So let's get straight into the build. Kaz Brecker is someone who I don't think needs any introduction. He's from Ketterdam. He is the floor boss and right-hand man of the Crow Gang, aka the Dregs, and he is a hard-ass to boot. He seems to be not only just a jack-of-all-trades, but a master of all. He can fight, he can deal, he can do all sorts of incredible things. Kaz himself is a master thief, a penchant for sleight of hand and doing anything vaguely along the lines of misdirection. If you need something stolen, Kaz Brecker is your man. He has a very prominent limp. He walks around with a cane, with a crow's head as its handle, which seems to be a weapon in and of itself. And he is a deathly serious man, whether it's coming up with plans to break into the little palace or facing imminent death and getting pissed off with Jesper for trying to crack a joke and lighten the mood. Kaz Brecker seems to be fearless, even when facing down General Kirigan, AKA the Darkling, we see that he is for the most part, pretty composed. He even gets away from that one, which is one of the best moments in the show, in my opinion. I loved it. Once again, using his sleight of hand abilities to get a smoke bomb or something as a distraction so that he can get away from the Darkling using his cut. Unfortunately, in the season, we don't see much of Kaz as an actual fighter, but we do see his brains and not so much the brawn. I'm gonna mention some very brief book spoilers, so some timestamps will appear over here, maybe down there, maybe over there, I'm not sure, I'll decide when I'm editing, but spoilers beginning in three, two, one, now. In the second book of the Six of Crows duology, Kaz has to stage a single man coup in order to gain control of his former gang, the Dregs, which have changed alliances now to Pekka Rollins and to Jan Van Eck, who are the main antagonists of the duology. In a show of rage and calculated martial prowess, Kaz has to single-handedly fight his way through at least a dozen of his former gang members, taking quite a brutal beating himself, but using his cane to deadly effect in order to sort of demonstrate that he's the real leader of this organization. It was, it was never the old man, per Haskell, as he calls him. So we do know that he can fight, but it seems to be a sort of last resort sort of thing. 
Okay, that's the end of the spoilers. Um, welcome back. I made yourself a cup of tea or something. Brilliant. Uh, we're going to keep going. Race, background, and ability scores. These are the easiest ones to do. Race is human, obviously. Uh, he's not anything else. We're not going to pretend that he is anything else. You might like to go variant human if your DM allows it, because that way you can pick up a feat, and we love those delicious and fantastic feats in 5th edition. Not so important for this build, however, I do offer a few suggestions in the event that you do want a feat, because they're always fun. As for background, well, he is an orphan. He grew up on the streets. He had to learn how to survive, steal, and make a name for himself. That's pretty clearly urchin. It'll give us some great proficiencies, including the disguise kit, thieves tools, sleight of hand, and stealth. Fantastic. All of those already are checking the boxes for someone like Kaz Brecker. Now, for ability scores, this is probably one of the harder bits to do of doing a character build based on a TV show character, because a lot of the time they're not going to have the inherent flaws that a lot of D&D characters have. As people know, I'm a min-maxer at heart. I like to optimize. I like to make sure that something that isn't worth having is not going to be had. However, in this instance, it's sort of hard with Kaz Brecker. We know that he is going to be a dex-heavy character. That much is very obvious. However, from there, it becomes a little more complicated. I'm going to offer a few suggestions. I don't necessarily want to prescribe a set order in this instance, however. We do know that Kaz is very intelligent. We don't see as much in the show, but in the books he is a fantastic strategist and planner. He comes up with plan A, B through to F, and probably including down to Y and Z. It seems that even in the show, Kaz is able to see several steps ahead of his enemies, of his companions, and see the bigger picture within the bigger picture within the bigger picture. Wisdom would be presumably high as well. Kaz has street smarts, he notices the little details that other people don't, and he uses that in tandem with his high intelligence in order to help him create his plans and figure out situations at a moment's notice. For Charisma, which seems like an odd choice, however, when you look at someone like Kaz, I mean, look at those eyebrows. My god, you can, you can feel the intensity coming off him. He has a very strong force of personality. He is a very intimidating person, although he often lets his reputation do the talking for him rather than actually doing anything about it. Unfortunately, in 5th edition D&D, charisma is one of those sort of, you either have it and use it all the time, or it's a dump stat and you don't ever touch it. If I was to build Kaz thematically, I would say that his charisma is pretty high, maybe slightly above average. For the purposes of the build, if you want something combat effective, you probably wouldn't need charisma as much. Now, in terms of strength, strength is the most ubiquitous stat. You either need it completely or you can completely ignore it. And for Kaz, I don't think it's important. You can easily make this your dump stat. He is about the average strength of a human, which would be strength 10, maybe, you know, slightly stronger. But again, for the purposes of the build, if you're doing point by, or if you're using standard array, or if you're getting lucky and you're rolling your stats, you might not get the numbers you need to perfectly represent them. So strength can be the lowest one. As for Constitution, he is a regular human. We don't see him take much of a beating in the first season, so we don't know exactly how tough he is. I would make this around an average statistic, maybe even just a normal one. Constitution, however, is pretty important, so if you're cautious and you're aware of not having as many hit points, you might want to give that a bit of a boost. So, to summarize, dexterity would be your highest, intelligence and wisdom would probably be your second and third, constitution would be fourth if you're trying to emphasize his combat utilities, if not you could put charisma there, and then finally the other one that you didn't choose as your fourth as the fifth one, and strength as your sixth choice. Class and subclass, Kaz is obviously a rogue. That shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. That gives us some very thematic features. Sneak attack, which is basically just a cheap shot, you know, fighting dirty in the barrel in Ketterdam. It also gives us expertise because he is obviously an expert in a wide array of areas. If you're looking for suggestions for your expertise, I highly recommend Sleight of Hand and Thieves Tools. He doesn't have the stealth capabilities of Anesh, who we were going to build bit later on. However, he is an expert with sleight of hand, with misdirection, and he is also a fantastic lock picker. 
For subclass, we are going to go Mastermind. I had a few ideas for a few of the different subclasses, but Mastermind felt like the most thematically appropriate one for Kaz Brecker. Mastermind plays more like a coordinator of your allies rather than a sort of combatant himself. It gives us a few interesting roleplay abilities, a few support abilities, including using the help action as a bonus action to grant your allies advantage, which you could sort of imagine as Kaz pointing at an enemy and ordering, or I guess asking for Inej or Jesper to take him down. There are a couple of thematic features in the Mastermind class, including Insightful Manipulator, where you are able to determine a few interesting tidbits about an enemy when you observe them, which is, of course, you know, something that Kaz would do. As the master planner he is, he would learn to pick out little vulnerabilities and weaknesses in an enemy. And Misdirection is, I, I don't think I need to explain, that's very clearly something that Kaz Brecker would do. You, of course, shouldn't be using this video as like a substitute for figuring out what the subclass does. You can check out the class on DND Beyond. You can get the book. I'm not sure which book it comes in, actually. I know I have it, so maybe it's Xanathar's. Or... I'll put some text down there to tell you which book it is because I can't remember off the top of my head. We're in the final stretch, we're looking at feats and then equipment. For feats, you have a few interesting options depending again on which direction you want to take your Kaz Brecker build. If you want to go for the sort of always observant, always planning, always thinking five steps ahead, you might consider taking something like Alert. Alert gives you a plus five to your initiative, it also means that you cannot be surprised and enemies do not gain advantage on their attack rolls by being hidden from you feels very Kaz to me. If not, you might go for something like Keen Mind. Keen Mind is going to boost your intelligence and it's also going to help you keep track of things like time, direction, memory, etc. Which again, feels very much like a Kaz thing to do. If not, you might go for Observant. This is leaning more into the, obviously, observant parts of Kaz. You are able to read lips, able to spot things that people don't normally spot, boosting your passive perception and passive investigation scores. If you want to lean into the master of all trades thing, you might end up picking Prodigy. You get another skill proficiency because rogues don't have enough, and you also get another source of expertise. How exciting. Hi everybody, I am just editing the video now and I realized that I didn't actually talk about equipment, so we're going to very quickly talk about that. For Kaz, his main weapon seems to be his crow head cane. I would imagine that as like a quarterstaff. Talk to your DM, rogues are able to use simple weapons and a quarterstaff is a simple weapon, so I would recommend using that. Otherwise, you get crossbows, short swords, etc., which don't really appear in the Grisha verse just because people are using firearms and everything. I would again recommend talking to your DM about that sort of flavor you might end up using a crossbow instead, but I feel like Kaz wouldn't necessarily use something that would make so much noise unless absolutely necessary. So, quarterstaff is the way to go. You get your thieves tools, you also get like a menagerie of different sort of rogue applicable things. Kaz's inventory would be pretty standard for a rogue. You might want to talk to your DM as well about potential smoke bombs, but that might have to wait until we talk about building Wylan. So that's the build. I'll put a little summary thing maybe here just to quickly explain things. It's pretty straightforward. I'm trying not to waffle on too much because I know that Iron Man video was very long. I also haven't included any B-roll because I feel like Netflix is going to hit me with a copyright notice like it has done a couple of times in previous videos. So I'm not going to do that. My apologies. Please check out the show, however. It's really fantastic. And Tell me what do you think about the character build? Do you think it's interesting? Do you think it's cool? Would you enjoy playing this? Would you make Kaz any differently? If so, I would love to hear what you think. Leave a comment down below. Next up, we're going to be looking at Jesper. Jesper is going to involve some interesting issues because he is obviously a gunslinger, but guns aren't an official product in D&D 5th edition. So we're going to have to do a little bit of homebrew. So Hope you guys are excited for that. Until then, keep on playing and I'll see you guys some other time.